Hello everyone, this is Brent Beardsley here with the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. Thank you once again for joining us as we take a behind the scenes look at the habitats and some of the amazing animals that live in them. Today we are in our journey to South America Hall. Many people may not realize this hall takes you on a literal journey through the seasons and elevations of the tropical rainforest. So you start here down at the forest floor and as you climb up the rampway, you get higher and higher in elevation through the rainforest. So we want you to actually feel like that you are going on a journey. On the main floor here, we have a lot of these animals that are native to the Amazon basin. So we have a lot of feeling like you're going through the jungle in the rivers. And then as you journey up into the top, you're getting through the different layers of the rainforest. You're getting into the canopy, the understory, all those different layers. And then we head upstairs, we get to uh, our other organisms and mammals that tend to live kind of in the, um, in the trees and in the tree tops as well. Um, and then we finally get up to our amphibians, which is my favorite section. Any visitor to our facility will notice that all of our halls are immersive. However, when one is in our South America hall, one truly feels the hall and the difference. As you walk into the journey to South America, you always feel that wall of humidity, right? And part of it is very important because of the plants. A, we have a lot more plants producing oxygen, but that humidity level needs to be always higher than it is here in Utah, both for the plants, but also the animals. So this hall is very, very warm and humid to replicate the environment of the rainforest. So a lot of our animals feel at home and healthy. A lot of their uh, habitats tend to be closer to the equator. They receive a lot more rainfall and the rainfall and all of the foliage, all the green life uh, produces a lot more ambient humidity. So our average temperature in the Journey to South America Hall is going to be about 77 to 82 degrees, and it's gonna be at least 50% humidity. This is so critically important to keep our animals healthy. As you come through our journey to South America, you can see that there are numerous species, both plant and animal. All of these have specific requirements for care, but some of them take a little bit extra to thrive. The hardest habitat to care for here in the Journey to South America Hall is honestly the toucan and the sloth. Because you have those different stories, you have to clean and care for three different stories. Uh, the hardest habitat to care for is our discus habitat, partially because they're so picky to eat, but also because we have plants underwater and above water. So there's different ranges that we have to take care of. We have a very large collection of plants probably 250 different species of plants, some of them extremely rare. We have a few micro orchids. I mean, their leaves are just tiny and the flowers are also just tiny. And if the humidity drops past a certain point or if you get too much water, they just rot and die, so. I think the hardest organisms to take care of are, are epiphytic plants. Those are the plants that grow without having their roots really in any substrate or soil. So they mainly grow on trees and other substrates up in the treetops like moss and such. They tend to need a little bit more specialized humidity and a fertilizer. They tend to do great in our dart frog habitat because of the automatic misters and frog poop makes a great fertilizer. And it's not just the animals that live in the South America that require special adaptations. Working in this hot and humid environment requires our keepers to come up with a few unique adaptations as well. Some of the challenges of working in this gallery is uh, being hot and humid all the time, as well as exposure to a lot of our animal habitats, so there's very little backup house space for tools and equipment. One of the other challenges is making sure that we are keeping in mind the needs of all the different animals. Tortoise needs are different than toucan needs. So making sure that the habitat can meet the needs of all the individuals who call it home is probably the trickiest part. Well, it's interesting. In this gallery, we're open to the public. 
we're not behind glass. And so it's very immersive and very exciting. You get to feel like you're walking through the jungle, but because of that, the plants are right where everybody can touch them and feel them. And I do want people to experience the plants, but sometimes uh, they can cause a little bit of damage in their excitement to see the plants. All of our different habitats here at the aquarium are full of unique and interesting species. Here in our South America Hall, we have a combination of plants and animals, which can make finding some of these unique gems I and mean, quite the treasure hunt. One animal I hope every guest stops to see in the journey to South America is the dart frogs. They're one of my personal favorite group of animals, and they're really what got me inspired to pursue husbandry work. I love designing vivariums because it marries both animal husbandry, horticulture, and art and design. One animal I hope that you stop by to see in our Journey to South America haul is our Cuban rock iguana. He often gets overlooked, but he is an impressive reptile. He loves to bask right up against the window in the sloth habitat. So if you go to the very top of our giant's habitat, looking down in the water, there are lots of plants growing around the outside and we wanted to put plants that are also giant. So we have a giant philodendron, and this plant is massive. The leaves can get 10 feet long. They're pretty massive. So if you see that, it makes me happy. It's, it's just a magnificent plant. I hope every guest here stops to see our arapaimas. They are two large freshwater fish. They actually are air breathers, so you'll see them at the surface during feeding time. All of the animals here at the Loveland Living Planted Aquarium are ambassadors for their species. Each of them has a unique and interesting story and message to share with us. It's important that we have these animals in an aquarium in Utah because a lot of us aren't ever going to be able to see these animals in their native habitats, but they're still very important to the global ecosystem. We're so far away from a lot of the tropics. Utah is a high mountain desert and we're very landlocked where most of these plants and animals are native to is extremely remote. And a lot of plants are struggling out there and animals have their habitats disappearing in the wild. So the Amazon rainforest is experiencing a lot of uh, habitat loss and destruction from people taking resources. So it's very, very important for us to replicate those environments so we can see what we should appreciate and uh, what we can do to help protect it. We inspire people to care about an ecosystem that is so different from our own. So coming here, seeing these animals, learning about them, uh, hopefully helps people understand that we are all connected as an overall worldwide ecosystem. Uh, and even us here in Utah can make a difference. Taking care of animals is something that all of us can do. There are any number of simple actions in our day-to-day -day lives, which we can adjust and take to have a major impact on the amazing diversity and species of animals found around the world. There's a lot of different places that are working towards conservation. Obviously we are as well. We even have a species survival program for plants, believe it or not. We have a cactus here, it's called Hadiora cylindrica, and this plant is endangered critically in the wild. It lives in the Amazon, and there's very few places where it can survive still because it grows on trees. And when those trees are cut down for lumber or to make way for agricultural grazing land, they disappear. Uh, the biggest things we can do to help protect it is look at resources as far as what you're buying and where you're buying it from and make sure none of it was harvested from the rainforest. One thing we can do to help is look to our own native ecosystems and what we can do to help preserve those, like recycling, conserving water, any sort of conservation we can do in our own backyard helps the world's ecosystem. There are little itty bitty choices and you don't have to do all of them. Even just one will help. If you make a difference to buy sustainable wood when you're doing a lumber project, if you make a difference uh, to choose uh, sustainable palm oil when you're buying shampoo or conditioner, making a difference to choose paper straws or no straws at all, those little itty bitty things will make a huge impact for a diverse ecosystem. Thank you for joining us as we have taken this behind the scenes look at the amazing habitats across the aquarium and around the world. From the icy Antarctic where we see our penguins 
to the tropical rainforests of Asia and South America, from the depths of the ocean to the deserts of Utah. Here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, we try to represent our living planet. Thank you for joining us on this journey to explore, discover, and learn. And we hope that you continue to find ways to explore, discover, and learn in your own backyard, in your state, and of course here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium.